parliamentary sovereignty is arguably the single most important constitutional principle in the United Kingdom today. Parliamentary sovereignty is also known as parliamentary supremacy, and this really touches on the basic principle. The principle is that Parliament is the supreme sovereign lawmaker, the highest authority in the land, and cannot be overruled. This form of sovereign power or sovereign lawmaker is found in most countries, and in many countries it is their codified constitution that is sovereign. An example is the American Constitution, which was held to be sovereign in 1803 in the case of Marshall and Madison. As the UK has an uncodified constitution, it is Parliament that is sovereign and provides the certainty that having a supreme form of law provides. It is necessary to pause here and consider the two types of sovereignty. The first that we will be dealing with today is legal sovereignty. That is the legal process as to whether the law can be challenged, as to whether they legally have free reign as to what law they pass. Now, the other type of sovereignty is political sovereignty. And that is best explained by Stephen's example of the blue-eyed babies. Now, he said that there is nothing to legally stop the British Parliament from passing a law that says all blue-eyed children must be killed. They, they, the legal process is in place to do it. But what would stop them from doing that and carrying out such a law is hopefully their own moral conscience and the fact that any government that enacted that would lose the next election. And because of this, and is, this is the case for any democracy, that the government is always bound by the political consequences of their actions. So if we were to consider political sovereignty, no government would ever no government would ever be sovereign. So for that reason, we are just considering legal sovereignty. Now the British constitutional scholar A. V. Dicey sets out three criteria for parliamentary sovereignty. He says first that Parliament can enact law on any matter. This seems fairly self-explanatory. The second is that Parliament cannot bind its successors, nor be bound by its predecessors. Because if it bound its successors, its successors would not be sovereign. And its third principle is that no one can question the validity of an Act of Parliament, not even a court of law. Now, we will deal with a more detailed analysis of Dicey's principles and question whether Parliament really is sovereign in a future video. So that concludes a brief explanation of parliamentary sovereignty and its importance within the UK Constitution.